Greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister at St. Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. And today, Pentecost Sunday, we're here in the church building. Today, we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the followers of Jesus, uh, as recorded in the New Testament book of Acts. But also we celebrate the power and activity of the Holy Spirit of God in the here and now. We celebrate the Holy Spirit bringing life to today's world, to the church today, to us, to our lives and to, into our hearts. So let's come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, wherever we are when we share in this service, may we be conscious that you are present with us by the power of the Holy Spirit. May we know that we are part of the one body of Christ, even though we are not physically gathered in one place as the first disciples were on that day of Pentecost so long ago. Energize each of us with the life of your Spirit, O God. Through the gentle breath of the Spirit, open our hearts and minds to your word of joy and hope for us this day. Forgive us when we have failed to walk in Christ's way of love, when we have not loved you, our neighbour, or even ourselves with the love that reflects your love for us. If we are stuck firmly in unhealthy ways, shake us up, bring us back to life. Spirit of wind and fire, come to us this day, freeing us from our fears. Lift us up when we are fallen, Bring us the assurance that we are forgiven people, that new life starts now. Dust us off and set us squarely on the path to hope you have set before us. Remind us that we are never far from your presence. Open to each of us opportunities each day to walk in the way of Jesus. A spark, that is all we need on this day, Holy One of God, to light our quarantine aloneness so we can burst into bonfires which signal to all those around us that you are bringing to life and grace to us and to the whole world. We pray in the name of the crucified and risen one, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. This morning's Bible reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. It's from the New Living Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each one of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are are all from Galilee and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to, to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and, and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying they are just trying, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is too much early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. 
Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In these in those days I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy, and I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark, and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. What image or images come to mind when you think of the word church? We can think of church in terms of a building, can't we? Like this one here at St. Luke's Heighton. Or we might think of church as denomination, like the Lutheran Church, the Uniting Church, the Baptist Church, or the Orthodox Church. Often in the media, the church is equated with the clergy, particularly the clergy of the Catholic or Anglican churches. But of course, many of us have been rightly taught from a very young age that the church is the people. How does that thing go? Here is the church and here is the steeple. Open the doors and here are all the people. But there is more to the church than just the people. According to Luke, the risen Christ had promised his followers just before departing physically from them, which we mark as the ascension, that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit had came upon them and they would be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. Now, Pentecost, the day we're celebrating today, is the fulfilment of this promise. It's all about the coming of the Spirit upon the ragtag group of disciples. And the Spirit is the very same creative Spirit of God that using the wonderful imagery of Genesis chapter 1, swept over the dark, chaotic waters and brought the cosmos into being, brought life out of nothing. On the day of Pentecost, according to Luke, this same creative wind swept over the disciples and rested on them like tongues of flame. Something new was brought into existence. To use the words of William Willimon, the famous American Methodist preacher, and I quote, it is the dawn of the day of Pentecost and the followers of Jesus are gathered to wait and to pray. The new day begins with an eruption of sounds from heaven and of wind. Things are coming loose, breaking open. I end the quote. This small, very human group of followers, these followers of Jesus, were energised, were propelled to go out and share the hope and joy that they'd found in God, the God who had come in Jesus, the one who was the teacher and healer, the one who was both crucified and raised. And by the way, they pretty well did share this good news of Jesus to the ends of the earth. As you heard in the text that was read a little earlier, on that day of Pentecost 2,000 or so years ago, according to Luke, they began communicating the good news of Jesus to those who came to find out what all the noise and racket was about. And not just communicating in the local Aramaic dialect, but in the native languages of these people who, were, who, while living in Jerusalem, were from many different lands. And over the ensuing years, members of this little group of followers of Jesus, the church, would indeed travel far and wide with this world-shaking and shaping news. Did you know it's the belief of the church in India that Thomas, Thomas, one of the twelve, travelled to India and began the community of faith there. So, friends, the church is more than just people. The church is a pilgrim people of God, energised by the Spirit of God. Now, I should say that the Holy Spirit of God is not locked up in the church or held bound by time or space. And so this spirit is amongst us now, sisters and brothers, and keeps pointing us, and indeed the community of faith, with all its frailties and limitations, 
back to Jesus. This, the wind of this spirit keeps blowing the people of the church out of fossilised habits and thinking, keeps shaking the church out of ways that do not reflect the way of the cross, keeps blessing us with renewed life. The local presbytery, that's the district council of the Uniting Church, met via Zoom on Saturday, May the 16th. There were something like 77 people or groups of people accessing the system, which that meant there were many faces on the screen at the same time. We spent some time during the presbytery meeting in what Zoom calls breakout groups, sharing our experiences of being church during the lockdown precipitated by COVID-19. People consistently spoke of how online approaches to ministry meant that they were connecting with new people and reconnecting with people who had slipped out of connection with the church. Indeed, most people reported numbers of people connecting to online worship well in excess of the numbers of folk who ever turned up at a normal church service. And that's been our experience here at St Luke's too we have received very many positive responses to these services on our YouTube channel. And the numbers watching each week are well into the high hundreds, 180 is about the average. So what might the Holy Spirit be teaching us through all of this about witnessing to Jesus in our time? How are we being reshaped by the Spirit to be church in the era of after COVID-19 restrictions cease? It's a question to ponder and to consider. The coming of the Holy Spirit shook things up well and truly at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit always that shakes things up, blows out the cobwebs, brings renewed life. On this day, therefore, the traditional prayer is to pray, come Holy Spirit. In one sense, it's a risky prayer because the Spirit of God is not tame or domesticated. The Spirit of God is not under our control. Yet as church, as individuals, let's take the risk. May we be always open to the Holy Spirit breathing vital fullness of life into our lives. May we dare to pray, come Holy Spirit, come again and again, Holy Spirit of God. This wonderful prayer was written by the late Bruce Pruer. Warm wind of heaven, moving the face of waters, twirling tree blossoms, fostering bush creatures, visit our untamed places. Warm wind of heaven, activating human clay, raising consciousness, stirring immortal longings, fill up our empty spaces. Warm wind of heaven, calling through leaders, singing through psalmists, reforming through prophets, unite our warring races. Warm wind of heaven, overflowing Jesus Christ, enfolding all the lost, keeping the church honest, swamp us with your graces. Warm wind of heaven, the gift of loving, the love of giving, the joy of living bless our upturned faces. I want to share a prayer of intercession in a minute based on a prayer by English writer and minister, the late David Adam. Uh, David Adam tends to use Celtic imagery. But let's pause before I pray and be conscious of the Holy Spirit with us as we pray. Holy Spirit, restless breath of love, breathe on us now and help us to pray as we ought. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos, bring order to our actions and purpose to our love. Holy Spirit, moving in the deep places of creation, move in the depth of our hearts. Holy Spirit, breathing life into all creatures, refresh, renew, restore your people. 
Holy Spirit, giver of all good gifts, help us to use our talents and abilities aright. Holy Spirit, giving life to dry bones, give hope and joy to all who are weary. Be known among the powerless and the oppressed, the unemployed and the exploited, those impacted by COVID-19. Bring comfort to the anxious and the fearful, to the ill, the grieving and the dying. Bring strength to those who offer care and healing. Holy Spirit, giver of love, kindle the hearts which without you are dull and cold. Fill your church, our hearts and minds with love. Shake us out of the ways that are not faithful to our calling in Christ. Encourage all who strive to proclaim the joy and hope of the gospel. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In the name of Christ, Amen. Ganko, <speaking in foreign language> Zikoye arkayutyun yev zorutyun yev park pagityans amen Friends go well into this week During even the most mundane moments of your week may you be aware that God is close May you know the comfort and presence of the Holy Spirit and may the Spirit kindle in you the fire of God's love and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you and those that you love, both now and forever. Amen.